Hawaii. Oh, cool. oh, in Hawaii, I'd say it's an unusual thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yoshivash. 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 <laughs> I was not expecting that. I thought you were going to say he's from the Czech Republic. Right. right. I thought he was gonna, like that. From Poland. He is Romanian and Filipino. Okay. So. The, see, that the Romanian, the, I, I, I know which side was his father's side. <laughs> I didn't check Ancestry.com, uh, Cam. I just checked. Okay. Also, That's went to, funny. He went to Princeton. <laughs> what did you say the line was? <laughs> uh, seven. I'm given the point. I think Cincinnati's going to work them. I think Washington's not as good as I thought they were going to be, and the Bengals are going to be furious. They should have won last week. Burrow called it like the worst loss he's ever had. They're 0-2. I think they're going to. this game is going to be over at half. I'd also play any Trey Hendrickson over sack prop that you can find because Jaden Daniels takes them. The offensive line is bad, and Trey Hendrickson is an absolute monster. All right. We got not one but two for your viewing pleasure tonight. Once again, Hembo and I will be at Bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey, tonight at 6 o'clock. If you're in the area, come by and see us. And we'll be back tomorrow on ESPN Radio. I had a problem with Wenicky doing it for Florida State. Well, here we are again, and I got to tell you, Jim, this match has me really concerned. Here we have a powerful heavyweight, a train, weighing in at 6,000 tons. And this hasty lightweight challenger... A car at just one and a half tons? This does not bode well for the car or the people in it. It's no contest. Every day, people are injured or killed trying to beat a train at rail crossings. See tracks, think train. This is the story of the one. As a warehouse manager, her job is to transform chaos into clarity and to see patterns where others see problems. Luckily, she's got a partner who shares her perspective. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products, backed by real person support and in depth online resources, so she can tackle every task with precision and turn potential setbacks into streamlined success. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat, literally. But don't sweat it, Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. What's up, guys? It's the champ, Sean O'Malley, here to talk to you about prize picks. Prize picks, the best place to win real money while watching football. Run your game on prize picks. Right now, PrizePix will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the PrizePix Daily Fantasy app and use code OT. That's code OT on PrizePix to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. PrizePix, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepix.com for restrictions and details. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Like that, let's put it online and see what happens stage. And the site is live. That we opened a store and need a fast checkout stage. Thanks, you're all set. That count it up and ship it around the globe stage. This one's going to Thailand. And that, wait, did we just hit a million orders stage? Whatever your stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 a month trial at shopify.com slash play. Hey, fans! Welcome back to Fansville's Cheers <laughs> and Tears. Oh. Okay, so like everybody deals with losing, right? To a rival on a last second field goal. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. I'm totally fine. But I cope with losing with an ice cold Dr. Pepper. Mmm, those 23 flavors are like so delicious. They totally wash away the pain of your college football team taking a big fat L. <laughs> college football, it's a pepper thing. Traveling with your furry friends can be rough. Just getting them to come along is difficult enough, so the last thing you want to worry about is finding a place to stay. But when you choose Baymont by Wyndham, your four-legged companions are invited because they know pets are family too. At Baymont by Wyndham, pets are not just welcome, they're VIPs. Baymont by Wyndham. Come on in. So glad you're here. Book now at WyndhamHotels.com slash Baymont. Every fan knows the right player in the right position can be a game changer. Put LifeLock between your identity and identity thieves to monitor and alert you to threats you could miss. Plus, with a U.S.-based restoration specialist on your team, 
you won't have to face drained accounts, fraudulent loans, or other losses from identity theft alone. All backed by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package. Change the game on identity theft. Save up to 40% your first year at LifeLock.com slash sports. This is an ad from BetterHelp. As kids, we were always learning and growing, but at some point as adults, we tend to lose that sense of curiosity and excitement. Therapy can help you continue that journey because your back-to-school era can come at any age, and BetterHelp makes it easy to get started with affordable online therapy you can do from anywhere. Rediscover possibility with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash teamwork today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash teamwork. Is it just me? Or does it sound like... The universe is sending a message. I be rocking Tommy John. Maybe it's time to really listen. Tommy John. To Tommy John. Tommy John. Tommy John underwear has dozens of comfort innovations like outrageously soft, lightweight fabrics that can keep you two to three times cooler than regular cotton. Tommy John. Tommy John. With thousands of five star reviews and over 20 million pairs sold, people love Tommy John. One Tommy John fanatic raves, love the summer weight and breathable fabrics. Just the right support. And everything's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. Shop Tommy John now for huge summer savings. Get 25% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash stream. Save 25% at TommyJohn.com slash stream. See site for details. Learn more at CDW.com slash Apple. just getting started nothing stops this train nothing get used to the mantra all gas no break no break break. from the headquarters of espn in bristol connecticut this is carlin versus joe on espn radio and on the espn app (laughs) how difficult it is to rush for 274 yards in a game Apparently not very. It's Carlin versus Joe. ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. And on your smart speakers, I am Chris Carlin. He is Joe Fortenbaugh. Good afternoon, Joseph. Yeah, it just happened yesterday. So, you know, not like it's that rare of an occurrence. It just happened in the last mm. 24 hours. Uh, you'd be proud. You and I always talk off the air how right as the show starts at noon Eastern, within the opening six minutes, both of our phones explode with messages from close family and friends who know what we're doing for a living, yep. but couldn't care less and just hit us up with a litany of requests or favors or inane commentary. I almost did the same to you. I almost did the same to you. Saturday, late afternoon, you're on the call for the Rutgers game. They're playing Virginia Tech. You know where I stood on that game. There was some questionable game management decision-making. I was losing my mind. And I was like, I got to let Carter know my thoughts. He needs to know my thoughts. And right as I was typing it up, I'm like, wait a minute. Is it possible that? Carlin being the voice of Rutgers and calling this game might mean he's occupied and thus does not have the time for the ramblings of a degenerate gambler regarding certain game management decisions. So I thought wiser and I left you alone until after the game. Well, frankly, I I am proud, but yet a little disappointed because (laughs) uh, in the moment, it's a problem when at the end of the game, the game gets tied up late for those who don't know. And the first thing I think is, Wow, wonder what Joe's thinking right now. (laughs) Earlier in the game, Rutgers had the big lead. It's fourth and one on the goal. I'm like, just kick the field goal, extend it to three scores, and we're good. And they go and they get stopped. I'm like, oh, I got to tell Carlin what I think of this. (laughs) Carlin has to know my thoughts. Well, you held back. You showed restraint, unlike (laughs) most of our family, most of our friends, who usually chime in with panicked texts or emails that are something not to be panicked over. But yet here we are, so let's get going. It's Carlin versus Joe on ESPN Radio, and we begin in Dallas because why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Joe, that was that was a destruction yesterday. I know what the final score was. That, that has more to do with the Ravens' inability to hold leads. But in the end, they ultimately did by the same way that they got the lead, by running the ball down the Cowboys' throat. That was a team that had no secrets about them. 
And they went into that game, and they did not take the Cowboys' defense seriously at all. And how I know that is you run the ball 45 times in 60 offensive plays for 274 yards. And you know what? They were right to not take them seriously. I mean, the Ravens walked into that game, and they said, we're not going 0-3. That was just their mindset. Mm -hmm. We are not going 0-3. This might not be filled with style points, but we're not going 0-3. We're going to do what we do. We're going to jam it down their throat. And that's what they did. And Dallas had no answer. Indulge me for a second as I referenced the Utah-Oklahoma State game, which was an absolute war on Saturday. Absolute war. If you don't know, you go back and look at the details. Utah survives. No cam rising. Just a great defensive effort all the way around for the Utes. And Kyle Winningham, who we spoke to last week on this show, spoke after the game. And they asked him about the performance. And, you know, what do you take away from it? And he just sits there. And I'm paraphrasing here. I'm not going to do him any justice. He goes, it always starts with stopping the run. He goes, that's the goal. You stop the run, you make a team one-dimensional, and you work from there. And I remember thinking that, like, it's just so cut and dry. Like, the guy has a philosophy. He's been the coach at Utah since, you know, Jesus walked. I mean, he has been there forever, right? And he, it's, it's got his philosophy, and every year he puts out a good product. And you think about stopping the run, not letting a team allow themselves to establish tempo, to find a way to put you on the back foot. Well, Dallas has no ability to stop the run. That's two weeks in a row. They have been completely overmatched by two teams that were like, yeah, we're going to run the ball. We're going to run the ball. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to take it to you. One thing that always comes up in sports betting amongst professionals is what's your edge? What is it about what you do that gives you an edge over the casino? Blackjack players who can count cards, that's their edge, right? Professional Mm -hmm. sports bettors, they might have people placed in certain locations that can get them great information. They might have the best model that anyone's built. What's the edge? Dallas has no edge. There is no way their head coach is ever going to outcoach someone on the other sidelines that's worth a damn. John Harbaugh versus Mike McCarthy was over from the beginning. And Carlin, you look around the NFL. Look at what Matt LaFleur is doing in Green Bay with Malik Willis as his quarterback. Look at Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota with Sam Darnold. Look at what Mike Tomlin's doing with Justin Fields. Look at what Sean McVay did yesterday against the Niners with nobody. Everybody was hurt in that game. Mike McDonald in Seattle. John Harbaugh, I know he lost yesterday, but that team's playing competent football. What's the edge in Dallas? Because from a coaching standpoint, they are so woefully underprepared for almost every game they play. It's shocking that they somehow find a way to 500 or better each of the last few years. Yeah, it, 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 they're unprepared. And they don't have enough talent. And when Jerry says in the offseason they were all in, turns out we weren't sure of it, but he had a pair of deuces. That's, that's basically what he's working with right here. And he's got nobody to blame but himself. But we'll get more of that, more of that later. I want to hear more, though, from the players involved in this. First of all, Micah Parsons after the game on what went wrong. Right now, we got people just trying to be Superman. People just got on their jobs, bro. We don't need everyone to be Superman. We don't need no Supermans at all. We just need 11 guys playing together. And um, right now, it's just not in unison. Joe, uh, normally I try to read between the lines there. I have no idea what was said right there. Everybody trying to be Superman, everybody trying to do too much. That's not what I saw. I saw a team that was dismantled. Dismantled from front to back in the first half of that game. And not only that, I've seen a team that's been dismantled for three straight weeks. They've given up 557 yards rushing. I know they won week one. I get that. But I'm just talking about physically what's going on here. I mean, that is the most that the Cowboys have given up rushing in the first three games in 60 years. In 60 years. They're giving up 5.4 a carry. This is this is just getting the tar beat out of you. But then there's more. Here's Dak. Want to get your response to what he has to say right here. Us as players, we've got to be more professional uh, and, and understand our jobs, understand where we're supposed to be, and do that time and time again and, and keep our focus. You said be more professional. Can, what do you mean uh, by that? Yeah, but by knowing where you're supposed to be, knowing your reads, knowing where you're supposed to line up, knowing your routes, knowing your route adjustments versus certain coverages, every part of what being a professional is, it's doing your job and being prepared for, for every part of the job, however it may come. So time away from, from the building to being in the building, um, just being a pro and, and understanding that you can only get so many practice reps, but you can, you can watch the film, you can do all these other things that will help make up for it, and we just got to be more focused. Woefully underprepared. That's what it was. I would love to know during the week of practice getting set for this game against the Ravens what the plan was. Like, what was the Dallas plan 
that they discussed all week going into this game. Mm. They looked they looked rudderless. They looked like they had no plan. And now after the game, it's not one of these, you know, we got to get back to the drawing board. We got to figure some things out. Now they start to come unglued. Now you start to see what they're really made of. $60 million quarterback has no problem mentioning other guys not doing their job, right? Other guys not showing up doing what they're supposed to be doing. Not sure who he's calling out there, but has no problem pointing out that other individuals are not doing what they're supposed to. Star player on the defensive side, too many people playing Superman football. It is week three. It is week three. Even Carolina's feeling better right now than you are. Think about that. We got through one game yesterday to the point where if you're the Carolina Panthers, you're sitting there saying, all right, we're one and two. We showed some signs of life. We got something here. And they feel way better in Carolina right now than they do in Dallas. And this is what you get with this coaching staff. You saw how unprepared they were for that wild card game against Green Bay. You brought them back. And now they're unprepared week in and week out. Is it any surprise this is the result you get? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be in any way. And so now, with all of that in mind... We, we do address how much time the head coach has left. And I have been one that has not really thought that he was thoroughly on the hot seat, primarily because of Jerry's history of being more than comfortable with sitting with uh, coaches that will just do whatever he wants and just letting them continue to, to be that. A part of me wants to look at it and say, what where would they turn if they're going to fire Jerry if they're going to fire McCarthy honestly i don't know where that would be for the rest of the year but joe are you going to be shot like god forbid the cowboys go and lose to the giants in new york they're not doing that i unload on that one that's a big bet okay it's a very but big even bet. having said that what happens if they do like is that the end or does does mike last the season well, I got to figure out how to chase that money over the weekend. That would be my own personal issue coming <laughs> off something like that. Um, Let's start with how it affects me. <laughs> I would say this. I, I really do think they bounce back against the Giants because it's one of the look ahead line on that was Dallas minus seven. It's now down to four because everyone watches Dallas play poorly and the Giants play well. The Giants did everything they could to give that game away late. Uh, I think Dallas has won something like 13 of their last 14 against New York. 11 of those games have come by a touchdown or more. I think they get right on Thursday night. And then the question becomes what the Cowboys look like after that, because then you're at Pittsburgh hosting the Lions at the Niners at the Falcons, hosting the Eagles, hosting the Texans, and then you get the Commanders, but that's a road trip, and that's November 24th at that point in the season, Carlin. Like, it yeah. can go very, very sideways prior to that. So I think that's what you're going to be looking at. I think they get right Thursday, and then everyone thinks to themselves, all right, we're 2-2, two and two, we're okay, and then the problems start the following week when Pittsburgh puts it on them. It is amazing when you look at that stretch that if they ever did lose Thursday, it might be a time to make a decision if you are trying to somehow salvage the season. Uh, I don't know about you. I'm not handing the ship over to Brian Schottenheimer. Like, there are not many great options right now, even if they did make a change. And, boy, I, I don't. this might be unsalvageable at the moment. It might be. Carlin versus Joe, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. And as always, we want you to be a part of the Carlin versus Joe Nation on the Dr. Pepper call in line at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. ESPN Nation is presented by Dr. Pepper. It's not college football season without the delicious taste of an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. College football, it's a pepper thing. Once and for all, one NFL team has ended their quarterback controversy. It's next on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming up Tuesday. Yes, the 49ers are missing a lot of weapons on offense, but I'll tell you why I'm more concerned about their defense. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. With NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV, you can watch every game, every Sunday, all in one place. Which means you can watch the Dolphins, and the Broncos, and the Lions, and the Cowboys, and the Jets. Or whoever you're rooting for, all in your living room. But not literally, of course. That would be dangerous. Watch every game, every Sunday with NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up at youtube.com backslash NFLST. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday Ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. 
Hey, football fans, with BetMGM's second chance promotion, you'll get your stake back if your first touchdown scorer scores second. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to gamble responsibly. See BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. This U.S. promotional offer not available in Mississippi, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. For New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. For Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. For Massachusetts, 1-800-327-5050. For Iowa, 1-800-BETS-OFF. For Puerto Rico, one 800 981 Subject to eligibility requirements. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn a very liberal 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% boost on deposited money, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth for just $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Hi, I'm Jason Alexander. Or as you probably know me, Royal Flusher 25 from WSOP Free-to-Play App. Poker tips with Jason. Avoid making ego-based decisions. Like, you know you should fold, but you just can't let someone like Ian win. Oh, he's bragging about his precious infinity pool. You just can't help but going all in. Full house. I peed in your pool! If you love poker, play poker on the WSOP free-to-play app. Download now. College football fans, what's the best part of being at a game live? The color. There's nothing more exciting than seeing an entire stadium completely decked out in your team's colors. So why not add to that and put yourself right in the middle of it all? Because that color encompasses everything, from the tailgating and the fight songs to the marching band halftime shows. So let your true colors show and get ready to yell and cheer until you're blue in the face by scoring tickets today at Ticketmaster. Get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. We are back, and we are looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. That's right, Ron. I mean, in one corner, we've got a 175-pound guy, and in the other, a 6,000-ton heavyweight train? Jim, this guy has no idea what he's getting himself into. It's no contest. Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think train. At your job... Do you ever have to deal with a nose roller? How about a snub pulley? Well, if you're installing a new conveyor belt system, dealing with the different components can sound like you're speaking a foreign language. Luckily, you've got a team ready to help. Granger's technical product specialists are fluent in maintenance, repair, and operations. So whenever you want to talk shop, just reach out. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. ABC and stream on Hulu. Carlin versus Joe. Pizza money alert. Pizza, pizza. All right, four and four over the weekend, treading water, not good enough. We're coming out big tonight. There's two plays right off the bat in this Bengals-Commanders game. We're going to lay the seven and a half with Cincinnati. We're going to play Cincinnati's team total as well. That's betting over or under how many points the team scores. The number's 27, I'm going to bet over. I think this is the big coming out party, the big beat down for the Cincinnati Bengals, the get right spot against a commander team that's moving in the right direction. They can score offensively, but the defense leaves a lot to be desired. They were torched by Maker Mayfield for four touchdowns in week one. They were torched for two touchdowns, Daniel Jones in week two. Cincinnati's going to be able to move the ball here. And all these 0-2 desperation teams over the weekend, what do we see? Desperate in Denver, wins. Carolina, desperate, wins. Indianapolis Colts, desperate, win. Los Angeles Rams, 0-2, desperate, win. New York Giants, 0-2, desperate, win. It was pretty much everyone but Tennessee who figured out a way. Throw Baltimore in there as well, who figured out a way to get it done. Desperate Cincinnati tonight, big win. Lay the 7.5, over 27 on the team total. Justin Fields lifts the Steelers to 3-0. and Cordero Patterson moves right to left across the formation in front of Fields. Back to pass. Throws over the middle of the field. It's Calvin Austin. He has a step. Austin heading straight up the middle of the field. Inside the 10. To the 5. Touchdown. Calvin Austin. 
Austin. 55 yards from Fields to Austin. I know, you know what kind of player I am. You know, I haven't changed kind of my whole life. So at the end of the day, uh, my teammates told me uh, I'd be great. Yeah, there's not really a discussion to be had anymore. Justin Fields is the quarterback for the Steelers. That's it. That's it. That's all That's all there can be. It's Carlin versus Joe, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. Uh, Joe, I don't know how you come out of it. 3-0. and um, He's getting better each week. He did have a turnover yesterday. But in general, they asked him to go make plays with his arm. Uh, 32 times he threw the ball yesterday and completed 25 of them. 245 yards. This is Justin Fields' team right now. And if you're Mike Tomlin, when uh, Russell Wilson is healthy, you have to understand that if you're going to make that change, you're going to catch an awful lot of flack from the guys in that locker room. First, a more general concept on that game. Uh, If you were watching it, I was because I think there was a lot of intrigue in that game. That's one of those NFL games you you turn on and you kind of step back a little bit because it's a little bit cringeworthy in terms of, man, this is why if I ever thought I could play pro football, I cannot play pro football. (laughs) That game was physical. And you knew with Harbaugh bringing the Chargers in and the way they like to play now, and you know with any Steelers iteration you get, it's going to be a physical game. I mean, they were just laying wood. That was two teams laying wood. It felt like first to ten was going to win that game. So that's just the general thought process. Like, that was a hell of a football game to watch. It was unfortunate Justin Herbert got hurt because we didn't really get to see what could have happened late in a tight game. But so be it. That's the nature of the business. Before we dig more into Fields having won this job, he's completing 73% of his passes. Very, very good. He's doing what the team asks him to do. You know, he's managing the game properly. Let me ask you this. When you give up 10, 6, and 10 in your first three games of the season, Mm -hmm. how many quarterbacks aren't winning those three games? That's a great point. I mean, the ones that turn the football over are the ones that are, you know, potentially not winning those games. It, I didn't. I wouldn't try to sell you on the idea that Fields is the reason that they are winning it. I would say that Fields is doing more than enough right now that it shouldn't be a discussion uh, because even when things are going wrong with him, he's going to go potentially make a play with his legs. That, that's ultimately what it boils down to for me, and they did ask him to do some things yesterday. It wasn't go throw the ball 18 times. It was it was 32, but you're right. I mean, I think they're the fifth team in the last 25 years to give up 10 points or less in their first three games. I mean, that's absurd. They've been very, very good. The schedule has been, I'm not going to say easy, because it certainly hasn't been easy. It hasn't been daunting. It's kind of right there in the middle. The Falcons are decent, right? The, the mm-hmm. Chargers are going to pose a threat. And then Denver, you know, they're finding their way. I'm very intrigued at what happens when the Steeler defense has an off day. Because if we're going to project Pittsburgh, I don't think anyone was ever in doubt as to whether or not Pittsburgh was going to threaten for a playoff spot. That's in their DNA. That's who they are. But when you talk about the next level of the conversation, the Steelers being a formidable threat in the AFC, it comes down to their ability. If the defense doesn't have their best day, can the offense carry them? I don't know when that moment's going to come. They got the Colts coming up. Then they got Dallas. That could be intriguing. If Dallas is semi-organized, which I don't know if we can bank on that, then it's the Raiders, then it's the Jets. October 20th, that might be the game where we sit back and we say, okay, two good defenses going toe-to-toe. Rodgers, if still healthy in the way he looked in week three, leading the Jets, Fields might have to do a little bit more. That's the true test for the Steelers is whether or not Mm -hmm. they're going to have a quarterback who can cover up on the rare occasions where the defense doesn't carry the day. I I wouldn't even be putting this forward if I felt like the other guy in Russ was able to do that. Like... Yes, he's injured right now. Yes, they're three and zero, but we all know that Russ is capable of carrying a team. No, he's not, not anymore. And I don't necessarily believe that Fields is. It's it's merely handicapping a race. <laughs> Who's got a better chance of making that happen? Right? It may not be massively better, but it's better enough for me at that point. Now, you as a Steeler fan, this yeah. is what you want. You want to stick with no, Fields. This, this is a more objective view. What about as if, okay, then I just want to hear from Carlin the fan. Yeah, this is what I want as well. Carlin the fan wants to stick with Fields. Do you think you represent the majority opinion of Steelers fans? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not asking you to speak for Steelers fans. That would be blasphemy. I'm just asking if your opinion. (laughs) I'm just asking if your opinion. What are they going to do to me? I mean, honestly. (laughs) 
I, it, for Manny Brothers a issues poll. a lifetime ban to Chris Carlin. <laughs> if you took a poll of Steeler fans in Pittsburgh, I would say at least 80%, and that number might be light. Want fields to continue. To Man, you gotta be feeling good when you're three and zero. Oh, life's sure. good, right? Like you're not pointing out a lot of flaws right now. No, it's a not. good Charger team. You're not, and that defense is even better than I thought it could be. It, it they're just playing at that level. And you're right. I would have wanted to see what it looked like later in the game with Herbert as well, but uh, they are just beating the daylights out of teams now. But what did you and I both say before the season? It's a team that has to stack wins in the first half and win the games that either they can win or they're supposed to win. Because in the second half, you've got the entire division uh, the the whole time, although Cleveland is looking a little bit more manageable. Let me jump point. in. Let's dig down on that real quick. Yeah. Because that was our consensus opinion before the season started. First mm-hmm. half of the schedule is where the Steelers have to make it rain. Second half is where it's hell. Well, mm-hmm. hold on. Second half now off the bye, you're going to play the Commanders. Yep. Okay, we always knew that was probably winnable. Then it's Baltimore, suddenly not looking, I don't think, all that close to where we had him before. We thought a step back could be coming, but that was shaky the way that game went late yesterday. Yes. After that, it's Cleveland. To your point, you just brought up, they look terrible. Cincinnati currently 0-2. They don't look like they're playing a lot of defense. Then it's Cleveland again, back to our original point on the Browns. Then you're at Philly, who God knows what could happen with them by that point in the season, the way they like to play each week. Then it's Baltimore again. Then the Chiefs. Than the Bengals. It might not end up being as daunting as once originally thought, just throwing that option out. Well, there. I mean, listen, it's a, it's a fair thing to think after week three. I would say when it comes to Baltimore, just given what the history is between the two teams and how much they hate each other, uh, no matter where Baltimore is, I'm absolutely going to be of the belief that that's going to, that that's going to be two brutal games. Yeah. And you, you would sign for a split in a heartbeat. Cleveland right now, yeah. Throw that out because they have absolutely no clue offensively what to do, and they cannot block, and they can The quarterback is atrocious. Like, there's all kinds of problems there. Again, Cincinnati, I'm not going to back off of a concern there. I'm not, you know, Phil, going to Philadelphia is never going to be easy, and I would still expect, given the Eagles uh, at that point of the year and what the rest of the division looks like, that they're going to need every game that they can get and just to make sure that they win the division, even if it's a 10 wins. So, uh, yeah, it's not as tough as you would have said before the year, but it's still pretty. I mean, it's still one you have to be concerned it's about. It's daunting, but, I mean, they're right there. They, they I mean, th- thankfully for Pittsburgh, yesterday's the first time in six and a half years they haven't played a one-score game, and they found a way to win it. But, I mean, Tomlin's like 1,000 and O in these one-score games. It is staggering how many one-score games Pittsburgh finds a way to win. At this point, we're so far off the spectrum when it comes to where the the mean and the average is for that sort of thing. Like Over a large enough sample, let's call it 500 games, your record in one-score games should be 500, right? You should Mm -hmm. win 250 and lose 250. Every now and again, you're going to hit the game-winning field goal. Every now and again, they're going to hit the game-winning field goal. Every now and again, you'll fail on a game-tying touchdown drive. Every now and again, they'll fail. For them to be, over the last four or five years, so far in the positive on this that it's not even close, everyone's predicting the regression is coming. Tomlin coaches through it every single week. It's amazing what they are doing in these tight games. Carlin versus Joe, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. Joe, I want to let the listeners behind the curtain for a second. Mm -hmm. There are times that I will give you a tease of the next segment that maybe I'm overselling it a little bit Mm -hmm. just to try to get you to hang around. Just... Just letting you know that. Sure. Okay? I'll admit it. This is what it is. It's business. It's show business. People are not going to want to miss Herm Edwards. Based on what I heard during the break moments ago, you're not going to want to hear- miss Herm Edwards. Is that a fair assessment? Herm is very mad. He is very mad about one specific thing that happened yesterday, and it's hard to disagree with him. Very Buck- mad. Buckle up. He's calling for the whole league to be shut down. Uh, it's uh, And you know what? Justified. It's next. <laughs> and you'll find out why on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The hunt for October continues on ESPN Radio. The final week of the regular season is here, and two teams in the thick of the race for the final two National League playoff spots go head-to-head. When the Braves welcome the Mets, coverage begins tomorrow and Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern with first pitch at 7.20 Eastern on ESPN Radio. 
Thanks for calling Discover. This is Diego. Hi, Diego. It's Jennifer Coolidge. You know, I just want to say your cashback match makes me feel so special. It really inspired me. That's great. Doubling the cashback you've earned at the end of your first year is what we do. Well, I'm doubling everything now. Double dating, double dipping, double feature, double header, double whammy. You know, basically double or nothing. You earn, we match. Discover cashback match. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. At the Home Depot, we know Saturdays are for college football. That's why we have everything you need to never miss a play. Like Bear Dynasty Interior Paint, their most durable one-coat hide paint ever. From a team color statement wall to a fan cave, complete with a mural honoring Nick Saban's 17-year dynasty. Hey, I like that idea. Nothing beats Bear Dynasty Interior Paint. It's everything you need all in one can. Defend your game time with Bear and the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Valid only when tended to colors from the Bear Dynasty and Marquee Interior One Coat Hide Color Collection. What's up, guys? It's the champ, Sean O'Malley, here to talk to you about Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the best place to win real money while watching football. Run your game on Prize Picks. Right now, Prize Picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks Daily Fantasy app and use code OT. That's code OT on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. This is an ad from BetterHelp. As kids, we were always learning and growing, but at some point as adults, we tend to lose that sense of curiosity and excitement. Therapy can help you continue that journey because your back-to-school era can come at any age, and BetterHelp makes it easy to get started with affordable online therapy you can do from anywhere. Rediscover possibility with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash teamwork today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash teamwork. Every fan knows the right player in the right position can be a game changer. Put LifeLock between your identity and identity thieves to monitor and alert you to threats you could miss. Plus, with a U.S.-based restoration specialist on your team, you won't have to face drained accounts, fraudulent loans, or other losses from identity theft alone. All backed by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package. Change the game on identity theft. Save up to 40% your first year at LifeLock.com slash sports. Close your eyes and imagine waking up in a cozy room on your comfy bed and your stomach instantly growls. Well, when you stay at Baymont by Wyndham, all you have to do is walk downstairs to their Baymont Breakfast Corner. It's more than just a meal. It's a warm welcome to your day. Picture yourself enjoying fluffy waffles, crispy cereal, and a glass of chilled orange juice. Or a hot cup of coffee, all on the house. Start your day the right way with Baymont by Wyndham. Come on in. So glad you're here. Book now at WyndhamHotels.com slash Baymont. Hey, fans. Welcome back to Fansville's Cheers <laughs> and Tears. Oh. Okay, so like everybody deals with losing, right? To a rival on a last second field goal. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. I'm totally fine. But I cope with losing with an ice cold Dr. Pepper. Mm, those 23 flavors are like so delicious. They totally wash away the pain of your college football team taking a big fat L. <laughs> college football, it's a pepper thing. Is it just me? Or does it sound like the universe is sending a message? Maybe it's time to really listen. Tommy John. To Tommy John. Tommy John. Tommy John underwear has dozens of comfort innovations like outrageously soft, lightweight fabrics that can keep you two to three times cooler than regular cotton. Tommy John, Tommy John. With thousands of five-star reviews and over 20 million pairs sold, people love Tommy John. One Tommy John fanatic raves, love the summer weight and breathable fabrics. Just the right support. And everything's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. Shop Tommy John now for huge summer savings. Get 25% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash stream. Save 25% at TommyJohn.com slash stream. See site for details. This is SportsCenter. 
I'm Christine Lisi. Some business decisions coming from the Raiders organization after some unnamed players made business decisions of their own on the field yesterday. This according to coach Antonio Pierce. That promise from him after the Raiders were dominated in the 36-22 loss to the Panthers in their home opener. Defensive end Max Crosby called the game a wake-up call. Everybody has to be better. Chargers not certain of quarterback Justin Herbert's availability when they host the Chiefs in week four. He was pulled in yesterday's loss after tweaking his right ankle injury. Week three does wind down tonight with a pair of games. Jaguars visit the Bills 715 Eastern on ESPN. Bengals home to the Commanders 8 Eastern ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Number four Alabama begins this week as a rare home underdog to number two Georgia in their SEC showdown on Saturday. Chiefs move to 3-0. and They beat the Falcons on Sunday night, 22-17. Kansas City holds on downs again. Nick Bolton scrapes to the outside and makes the hit. Each individual week is his week, and we were 2-9 of nine this week on third down. In order to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field, you'd like to be able to convert some of those? we got to be better offensively at converting some first downs and run the clock out, but it helps when you have a defense that's able to bend in those moments before and make those big plays. And We're winning games, and I feel like we're going to start getting better and better each and every week. If you stayed up late, it was certainly worth staying up because it was a very good Sunday night game, but it it ended uh, in, I guess I would say, strange fashion. Let's bring in the head coach of our team. That's Herm Edwards. Of course, ESPN NFL analyst and former NFL coach. Uh, Coach, it's Chris and Joe. As usual, we love having you in studio. We appreciate it. Thank you. Let's just start here. Okay. Your your thoughts on the uh, non pass interference call in the end zone. As I stated earlier, when, when, I, when I walked into the room and, you know, and, and, and watching this game last night unfold, um, and, I, and I've told players this as, as a former player, um, and even when I became a head coach, it's not a right to play in the National Football League. It's a privilege. It's not your right. And I think sometimes players come in the league as talented as they are and They become Hall of Famers and whatever it may be, and they win Super Bowls, and they have long careers. I tell them all that it's not your right. It's it's you know it's it's not a right to play in here. It's a privilege, and I think anytime you work for that league uh, in any capacity, whether you be an official, whether you be an assistant coach, a trainer, head coach, GM, doesn't matter. Um, That league is about one thing: is about making. It's the symbol of excellence, of of people doing their jobs at the highest level. And when you watch a football game, that's what you expect out of everybody. You expect out of both opponents. That's why I always say it's not who you play, it's how you play the day you play. This is why you see games where you say, how did that happen? Well, obviously, you weren't ready to play these guys, right? And so you can say there's a play here or a play there. If you're an official, um, Jim Tunney's a good friend of mine. Officiate with a head official for a long time. Good friend of mine. Lives out on the peninsula. And when I watched what happened last night, I asked myself, I'm talking about the Atlanta game versus the Kansas City Chiefs and the no call. I watched that and I go, this is the National Football League. But not only that, if you're in Pop Warner football, if you're in flag football, if you're in high school football, if you're in college football, that's a foul. That's just a foul. If a, if, if a person from another country was coming over here and watching a football game and they saw that occur, they would probably turn to you as a fan and say, what is that? And you would say, that's a foul. And then the, the person would ask you, well, what happens when there's a foul? Someone throws the flag. And they would ask you then, well, why there's no flag? I don't know. I See, these are the things at the end of the day, guys, and I say it from personally. These are the games that later on, if you miss the playoffs by a game, by a game, some coaches get fired. <laughs> I, look, Raheem's doing a great job down there. But I'm just saying, this can't happen, man. Not, not that one. There's some you missed that are bang, bang, and you're out of position. But this is this is where, you know, we talk about replay. We talk about trying to get it right. You got to get that one right. What if that was in the Super Bowl or a playoff game? Can you imagine? 
Can you imagine what that? The, the one thing the officials don't want, and Jim Tunney told me this, they don't want to be a part of the conversation when the game's over with. They don't even want to be seen. They don't want to be talked about. But that's all we're talking about today now is that game. We'll see. It's starting to feel a bit common when it involves the Kansas City Chiefs. Do the fans have a right to get upset at some of this? Because, you know, a lot of people look at this and say, here we go. The league would love to see them in the Super Bowl. It's good for business. We get Taylor Swift. We get Kelsey. And now, not saying that there's anything wrong going on, but when it's in your head that it's better for the Chiefs to win, maybe you... You know, I, 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 away there. no, I, I don't think that. I, I think Herm, and, give it some time and really think it through. I, 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 I thought, <laughs> no, no, and, and, and and I would say that. Look, I, I, I like I said, guys, I, I, it's been a privilege to be a part of that league for thirty years. Okay, and and I'm I'm one of those guys, man. I look here. I I believe in the shield. I believe in doing it right, uh, making the game better for the next generation that follow the players and the coaches, right? Because you always try to do it better for the guys that follow you, right? And those officials are trying to get it right. They, they are. They're, they're not. I don't believe that. I don't want to believe that. I'll never believe that. But when something like that happens, you have other officials. And I know every official is assigned to deal. But when you see that, you got to run in there and say, whoa, we need to look at this one. We need to look at this one. Don't just let it go in the next play. You, this is one where you go, wait a minute. We might need to look at this one before we decide here. A review. Let's just have a review. Let's huddle up. Let's get them huddle up real fast. You got to tell that guy, that's a foul, man. We got to throw the flag. I don't care if it's a late flag, but you got it right. Yeah, get it right. Just get it right. That's all you want. Get it right. Coach Herm Edwards is with us. It's Carlin versus Joe on ESPN Radio. Uh, curious to get your thoughts about Antonio Pierce, your guy who huh? was with you yeah. uh, in Ar- at Arizona State, and his postgame comments about guys making business decisions. What was your reaction? When you when you hear that, that that's 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 uh, coach talk, and, and basically what he's saying is, <laughs> in certain situations where you can tackle somebody, they're making a business decision. Uh-huh. They're kind of like, oh, I couldn't get there. They're, they're staying on blocks, or they're closing their eyes, or they're like, oh, and knowing Antonio, and I know him, uh, a former linebacker, he he was a he wasn't a drafted player. Ended up being a, a captain of the Giants team. Um, he's a physical, tough guy. And if you don't play like that, and that's on the film, and you're putting it on tape, he's going to make sure you don't put it on tape anymore. You're going to be standing by him. Now, there's only there's only so much you can do in the NFL because you only have so many players, <laughs> right? But he sent the message. You're going to make business decisions? I'll make a business decision. My business decision will have you sitting over here. That hurts the player's pocketbook. So we'll see what happens. How do you think that resonates in the locker room? It's week three. Sometimes that can galvanize the locker room, bring them together. Everyone steps up. Sometimes people start to get a little angry or maybe they start to question the coach. How do you think this plays out? I think if you're, if you're a football player and they've got some good football players that play with the Raiders, um, they're going to say, well said, coach. Well said. And now the players got to fix it. They, 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 they got to fix that there. And then the players uh, with them Cowboys – that thought this was January and it's September. <laughs> they gotta fix it. They gotta fix their thing too. And and you know what? And and I, and I don't know if you guys can ask me this question or not. And I'm rambling. I know. And I, I no I know no no. I sound great. You're but great. Beats the hell out of anything we'd be saying. Look, yeah. I, I I Michael Parsons and Dak Prescott. I appreciate them as players. I think they're fantastic players. But I appreciate them more as men. For what they said, they basically told their teammates, "Hey, man." We get it. We got the star on the side of our helmet, and we're stars. They talk about we, they could talk about our team when we don't even want them to talk about us. They gonna talk about the Cowboys, guys. When we play like that, and defensively, when we don't do our jobs, and we're trying to make the hero plays and the all star plays, this is why we can't stop the run. And he called them out. Parsons called them out. He basically called them out. He said, "Guys, we got to have trust. There's no trust." Dak Prescott, call him out on offense. Hey, when you see a certain coverage, you got to change the route. You just can't freelance. That defense is a freelance defense. That's why they get ripped against the run. Every once in a while, they get a three-yard loss. But then the next one, they got an eight-yard gain. And that's how they play. And Parsons called him out, and Dak called him out on offense, and I applaud both those guys, man. Is it easier for AP to do a coach last one just based on his history as a player versus – Another head coach who now, as we know, 
We've got to protect everybody publicly. Yeah, but he didn't call names. Uh-huh. See, he didn't mention names. He said some guys made some businesses, and that's what you do. You don't call names. Uh-huh. And publicly, you never call names. Right. And now, I'm going to tell you what AP going to do. He's going to walk in that defensive room, <laughs> and he's going to put the tape on, and he's going to have those guys circled. And he's going to say, hey, man, here's your partner. You want to play with him? And the players are going to look at it and go, eh. And the players kind of know, but when the head coach comes in there and basically puts the tape on and calls them out in front of the defense, <laughs> the players start going, oh, well, you got to go, partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Herm, great stuff. Thanks for stopping by, Thank as you, always. My pleasure. We love having you every Appreciate Monday. Appreciate you both. Oh. Herm Edwards, great, great stuff with the coach right there. It's Carlin versus Joe on ESPN Radio. When you're trying to find quality candidates, all the searching, screening, and interviewing can become a job itself. You need, indeed, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to interview, screen, and hire quality people. Visit indeed.com slash credit. Even bigger than Antonio Pierce's comments, the Raiders might have a slightly larger issue. That's next on ESPN Radio and on TuneIn. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow seeks his first win of the season tonight against the Commanders. Ryan Hawkinsmith takes us back to the moment that he almost abandoned football forever. That's ESPN Daily. Follow us and listen wherever you get good podcasts. Brought to you by Barbasol Shaving Cream. Delivering a quality shave at an honest value for over 100 years. Progressive presents Renters MVP's Most Valuable Possessions. Today's MVP, Joe Fallon's bedroom mini-fridge. Sure, this pint-sized chiller's max capacity is three soda cans, but what it lacks in stature, it makes up in cooling strength. Each beverage, a perfect 37 degrees every time. And the two feet Joe walks to get a drink, priceless. That's why his mini-fridge is today's MVP. Keep your most valuable possessions protected by bundling your renters and auto insurance with Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Mom, meet Sarah. From first-time Nana moments. Yeah, welcome to Flight 101. To annual girls' trip moments. Your can't-miss moments are worth protecting against RSV. If you're 75 or older or 60-plus with a chronic condition like asthma, COPD, heart disease, or severe diabetes, you're at higher risk of landing in the hospital from RSV. And there are no prescription RSV treatments. Check eligibility and schedule your RSV vaccine at VaxAssist.com. So where should we go next? Sponsored by Pfizer. At your job, do you ever have to deal with a nose roller? How about a snub pulley? Well, if you're installing a new conveyor belt system, dealing with the different components can sound like you're speaking a foreign language. Luckily, you've got a team ready to help. Granger's technical product specialists are fluent in maintenance, repair, and operations. So whenever you want to talk shop, just reach out. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. We are back, and we are looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. That's right, Ron. I mean, in one corner, we've got a 175-pound guy, and in the other, a 6,000-ton heavyweight train? Jim, this guy has no idea what he's getting himself into. It's no contest. Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think train. What would you do if your online store converted 36% more shoppers? You could take 36% more vacation. Another pina colada? Yes, please. Open a new retail location with 36% more square feet. Fantastic. Hire 36% more help. You're hired and you're hired. Shopify has the world's best converting checkout, up to 36% better than other e-commerce platforms. What you do with those extra sales is up to you. Switch to Shopify today at shopify.com slash play and get a $1 trial. Shopify.com slash play. College football fans, what's the best part of being at a game live? The color. There's nothing more exciting than seeing an entire stadium completely decked out in your team's colors. So why not add to that and put yourself right in the middle of it all? Because that color encompasses everything, from the tailgating and the fight songs to the marching band halftime shows. So let your true colors show and get ready to yell and cheer until you're blue in the face by scoring tickets today at Ticketmaster. Get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Poker ASMR. Almost as much as I love playing poker, I love the sounds of poker. The chips, the cards, the hands, and of course the WSOP app sounds. If you love poker... Play poker. 
Download the WSOP free to play app and hear for yourself. Touchdowns, three nineteen, three touchdowns this season in one single game, and it happens in week three. Oh wait, I know how it happened. They played the Raiders. Yeah, and also uh, to go back to a little preseason conversation we had, the Panthers aren't that bad. Yeah, it's just they had a really bad quarterback the first two games, and now they got someone in there that understands the position. And hey, look at that. They can actually make some plays. Like, they're not a terrible team. They're not a 10 win team. Let me be very clear. But you get some competent play at the quarterback position, and then you face the Raiders, and there you go. It, problem solved. I, I believe it doesn't matter if they're a 10 win team, just a, a six win team. Is that correct? Uh, actually, five win no, on the, on the alternate line, after they bottomed out, the win total got moved to three and a half. I bet over three and a half. You just need four wins. <laughs> Look at you. You know what you do? You capitalize. That's capitalizing right there. Well, wow. to be fair, there are some losers out there as well. <laughs> I know. Want to make sure that people are aware. No, We're not just telling the winners around these parts. very straight up with it, and I don't respect that at all. About <laughs> um, but we should talk about Antonio Pierce yeah. and what he said. For those who did not hear it, what we were talking about with Herm a minute ago, this is what Antonio Pierce, the Raiders head coach, said yesterday after his team lost to the Carolina Panthers at home. And the question was, Coach, your team didn't show up tonight, did they? No, they didn't. I think as the game went on, um, I don't think it was a team. It was. I think there was definitely some individuals that made business decisions. And we'll make business decisions going forward as well. Now, you and I both thought that this was uh, a little bit... A little bit too far to go for Antonio Pierce. Herm tended to disagree. Lay it out for me when you hear that in relation to, and particularly, the Raiders. Oh, it just drives home the point that there's absolutely no reason under any circumstance ever you take this organization seriously. You just don't. There's 32 teams. They're not all created equal. Some are championship contenders. Some are teams on the fringe that are making a push. Some are rebuilds that are hoping to get to the next level. Some are teams that are down on their luck but kind of hoping maybe they can figure out a way to take a step forward. Then there's kind of the bottom of the barrel. The Raiders are one of those teams that they could win four games this year. They could win nine games this year. But whatever it ends up being long term, you don't take them seriously because they don't really have much of a plan in place. Like, like, look at them right now. Week one, they kind of get run over by the Chargers. All right, that's fine. Harbaugh's got that team playing very physical football. You can lose that game. Week two, you go upset the Baltimore Ravens. Now, that is a huge feather in your cap. You are one and one. You've gone on the road to Baltimore, who had 10 days to get ready for that game, and you beat them. What needs to come from that? Needs. Not what should come from that. What needs to come from that is, hey, men, we got Carolina this week. We're at home. No one's coming into our house and springing the upset on us. We got to put this team down and we got to put them down early. And then we're two and one. And then suddenly you're sitting there and you're like, all right, Raiders two and one. We got something cooking. It's a new era. Nope. Fall flat on your face. Lose to the Panthers who had been widely ridiculed top to bottom over the better part of the last two weeks. Bench their quarterback. You just lost to a team while playing at home against the first organization to bench its quarterback so far this season. And in the process, you got your asses kicked. It's not like you lost 21-20 in a really tightly competitive game in which a bad call went against you. You didn't even compete, Carlin. So again, to surmise, the Raiders are not an organization that under any circumstance you should take seriously. Yeah. And, Joe, I'm not even going to waste time echoing anything you just said just for the sake of me echoing it. You said it. I feel exactly the same way. So that leads us to this point. When, how much longer do we have to indulge the idea that Devontae Adams is happy in Vegas when I see him throwing his arms up yesterday uh, because his quarterback had no clue where he was on the field wide open? I mean, just the idea of how badly this situation has been mismanaged because there's 
two there's two reasons you have a star wide receiver, right? Like the star wide receiver is either there with the star quarterback and that team's going for a Super Bowl. Think Tyreek Hill with Patrick Mahomes. Think Joe Burrow playing alongside um, Jamar Chase. Think Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown going to the Super Bowl. Think Steph Diggs and Josh Allen competing, right? Like you have the stud quarterback. You have the star wide receiver. They're going out there. They're going to try to push it all the way to the end of the line. Then you have the star wide receiver whose job is to bring along the young quarterback, right? Like you're developing the young quarterback. You want to put good weapons around him. So this guy's job is to kind of make things a little bit easier. They were working to put those guys around C.J. Stroud um, in, in Chicago. Chicago, they they draft a Dunze, but they bring in Keenan Allen to go alongside DJ Moore. Like you want to put good weapons around young quarterbacks so they can develop. What is Adams doing in Vegas? Yeah. From the moment he got there, what was the plan? They never had a great quarterback with him, and now. 